Hi everybody, it's Lynn again. How y'all doing? Welcome to my kitchen. Bienvenidos a mi cocina. If you've been here before, I'm glad you've come back. If you're new, welcome. Good you stopped by. Today I want to make some Greek street food. As some of you might know, years ago I was in the Air Force and I was stationed for a couple of years in Greece. And one of the foods there that I really liked was a little street food called souvlaki. Souvlaki is kind of flatbread with some roasted meat on it that's folded together. Now many of you, if you've been to Greek restaurants, you've probably seen gyros or gyros, depending on how you think the pronunciation is. But souvlaki for me is a little bit different than that and I've never really had souvlaki like we could get on the streets in any restaurants here. So I've been thinking about it and since I got the power grill, I thought, hey, that might be a way I could make some souvlaki and see how it goes. So that's what I did, I tried it and to be honest, I think the power grill is just the right thing to make souvlaki on. I did a little research and tried to come up with some bread recipes. The bread is called pita, but it's a little different than what you buy in the stores. So today I want to show you how to make souvlaki, or the plural is souvlakia, and see what you think of it. I, I think it's a good use of the power grill. I'm going to use both the griddle plate and the grill plate. So if some of you haven't seen the griddle plate before, uh, you'll be able to do that. First of all, I'm going to start getting the meat ready. I do want to say, this is my recipe. I put all of this together and it's how I remember souvlaki from the time I was in Greece. Now your yaya may make souvlaki different, or you may say this is not authentic, and for sure, it is, I, it's based all, as I say, on how I remember souvlaki, and according to my taste, through all these years. First of all, we're going to marinate the meat. I like to get pork loins. You can get them on sale, uh, and then when you get them home, Take the pork loin and cut it crosswise into about three quarter of an inch width slices like this. When I'm done with them, I like to put them in the freezer and keep them so that I can use them when I need them. I've taken two slices like this and cubed them into about three quarters of an inch or sometimes one half of an inch wide. We don't want them really big. I found on the power grill that the smaller cubes grill more evenly than larger cubes. So I've got them all thawed out and now we're going to make the marinade. For the marinade, we're going to use the juice of one whole lemon. We're going to use a teaspoon of liquid smoke. We're going to sprinkle on some salt to taste as well as some black pepper. We're going to use a tablespoon of dry oregano, Greek if you can find it. And today I'm going to use about a half a cup of this souvlaki marinade which I get at Kroger's. Now if I didn't have the marinade, I would use about a half cup of olive oil instead and maybe increase the oregano. I've got the liquid ingredients in the dish that I'm going to use to marinate my meat. All of the liquid except for the lemon juice. And I just wanted to show you with the lemon juice, you can go ahead and put in the pulp as well. You don't need to waste any of the pulp. Put it into your marinade so that 
it will help get that good lemony flavor into the meat. Now we're going to add our cubes of pork. This amount of meat was from about two of those slices of the pork loin. And I'm just gonna mix that up. Add some salt. And sprinkle on some black pepper. And give it a good stir. Make sure all that meat is down there in the marinade. I'm going to put my lid on my dish and then put it into the refrigerator until it's ready to cook. So it'll be a couple hours or so that I'm gonna put it in there. I think a couple hours in the fridge to marinate the meat is fine, but if you would like to do it the day before and let it sit in the fridge overnight and then make the souvlaki for lunch the next day, that would be perfect. Now we're gonna make the bread dough. For this recipe, we're just making enough for maybe one or two people. And it's a quick bread recipe. So we're gonna be making it and we're not going to need to leave it set because it's really not going to rise. It doesn't have any yeast in it. I tried different recipes and I tried uh, some of the recipes that are made with yeast. So it's going to take longer. And of course, when you use yeast, you're probably going to make bigger batches. So that's going to be more time consuming. With this bread, you can double the recipe if you want to make more, but this is just so fast and it's really comes out almost, or for me, just the same as that that I made with the, the yeast. If you do have some left over, wrap it up, store it in the fridge, you can warm it up in the microwave and you can use it the next day. Ingredients for our bread are not many. We're going to use a cup of all-purpose flour, a little more as we knead the dough and roll it out just to do those tasks. We're going to use two tablespoons of olive oil, Greek is my preference because we're making Greek food. We're going to use a pinch of baking powder and we're going to grind on some salt. We're going to mix it all together with a half cup of warm water and a little more if we need it. Now, we haven't had our language lessons for today, have we? Hi, Adam. We're making Greek food. We're gonna throw in a little Greek, as well as some of the Spanish that we've used before. So, warm water in Spanish is agua tibia. Agua, water. Warm water, agua tibia. In Greek, water is nero, nero. And warm water is cliaro, Nero. Cliaro. Nero. To make my dough a little bit lighter, I'm going to use one of these. I don't know whether all of you still have one of these or not, a sifter. But if you don't have one of them, you can use a sieve like this to sift your flour if you, if you don't have a regular old-timey sifter. So we're going to put in the cup of flour. We'll add our pinch. I had two, the first one wasn't very much of a pinch of baking powder. And we'll grind in a little of this salt. And we're just gonna sift that into our bowl. We'll add our two tablespoons of olive oil. Mm. 
Now we'll add our water. And as I said, I'm, I've got more than a half cup in here, but I'll start with a half cup and we'll see whether we need to add a little more as we go. And I'm just going to use at first this spatula And I'm just going to take the ball of dough and knead it just a little bit more. Roll it into the flour a little bit and elongate it a little bit. And then we're going to divide the dough into three pieces, about as much the same size as you can get them. I love making dough. Although it can be hard work when you're making just a little bit, it isn't a chore at all. And it always gives me such a homey feeling. I think some of you that may have seen some of my other videos know that this is my mom's old breadboard that she had out on the farm. So it always gives me a special feeling when I get it out to use. So we've got these into discs and we're just going to roll them out into circles of about, about five inches in diameter. You can use your hands to get them a little more even. So we're gonna make those into circles. Set that one over there. Now we'll get this last one going. Now normally while I'm doing this, I've already got the power grill heating up and getting ready to uh, throw these on. But because I want to show you, and some of you may not have used the power grill before, I want to show you how that all works. I've got the base of the power grill. I've got in the bottom pan about half full of water. Next, we'll add the drip pan. Now, one of the things that you might notice is in the drip pan, there are these little arrows. They should point the same way as your controls for the heating unit. We've got our heating unit. To start off with today, we're going to use the griddle plate to cook the bread. And the power cord, we'll get that connected and we'll get it going. We've got the power. Now, if the power doesn't come on, you've got something in the wrong order. Uh, especially, you may not have put in the drip pan and just by accident, it doesn't go on without all of the components put together. So we've got our griddle plate, which we're gonna use first. To use the griddle and cook the bread, we're not going to use the fan. So I'll turn the power on. The blue light here shows our temperature and I'm going to kick that up all the way to 390. I'm gonna put my grill lid on while that's heating up so that it will all heat up faster. My grill is hot so I'm going to splash on just a little bit of olive oil onto the griddle plate 
and I'm going to take my brush and just spread it around all over the plate. And then I'm going to take my bread dough and put it on the grill. I think I can make room for a three here. They're pretty flexible. I do have to change their shape a little bit to adjust, but that's fine. So uh, I'm going to keep the temperature at 390. We want to start turning them around. Okay, we don't want them to burn. We want to cook them about three minutes on each side. One of the differences between this pita bread and Arabic pita bread, like the most common that you find in the supermarket, is this isn't really pocket bread. It does bubble up some, but it isn't the kind that's going to form pockets inside. You can see it is making some bubbles. I'm going to put the lid back on just for a sec. Okay, I think it's time to turn them over. Oh yeah. Aren't they pretty? Again, you'll have to judge by looking to see the doneness. I'm going to take a towel and put it on a plate. And then I'm going to take the pita and put on the towel. Now, if you happen to have one of those tortilla warmers, that would be perfect for keeping these warm. Okay, for the moment, I'm going to shut off the power. Now, I used the griddle plate for the pita bread, but I'm going to use actually the grill plate for the souvlaki itself. So when we get ready to make this change, if you're going from hot to hot, now sometimes I have time in between Maybe I make the bread earlier and then the grill has time to cool down. But if it doesn't have time to cool down, remember these plates are hot, hot, hot. So I'm going to change these out. I'm going to use my spatula and I'm going to use a pot holder. You want to have some place that you can take this hot plate to. And for me, that's my strainer in my kitchen sink because it's very, very hot. Okay, that was easy peasy. Now, I'm going to put the grill plate in and I'm gonna get my power back on again. And this time for the meat, since I've only got a small batch, I'm gonna put it up to 390, just like I did the bread. And I'm gonna put the lid on to get it warm faster. I think the grill is almost hot enough. I just wanted to show you, I made three skewers of the souvlaki. That's from those two pieces of meat that I cut up into half inch to three quarters of an inch size cubes. Now you notice here there's no veggies in between or anything like that that you might find on a kebab. We just got the meat on the skewers. So let's take the lid off and let's get them cooking. I'm going to add the fan to this and I'm going to turn that temperature down. I had kicked it up 
I'm going to turn that temperature down to 390. Now, while I was skewering the meat, I had one last idea. And I thinly sliced some onions. And I'm going to kick those onto the grill and cook them alongside of the meat. I had added that to the leftover marinade and I thought, hey, why let it go to waste? So we'll spread those out a little bit. We'll let them cook alongside the souvlaki. Let's turn them over. See how, how they're doing. Oh yeah, they're getting nice and cooked. And I'll pop the lid back on. Just be patient with these until you're sure they're fully done. When you're cooking, sometimes you start to get hungry, but I prefer well done meat, especially when we're talking about pork and chicken, those kind of things. The size of these souvlaki after they're cooked down really remind me of the street souvlaki that I used to get in Greece. Not those big chunks of meat that you get sometimes with the gyros in the restaurants, but nice little cubes of meat. And remember that our bread is a little bit smaller too, so they're gonna work perfect together. I think they're about ready, so I'm gonna turn off the fan and I'm gonna turn off the power on the grill. Just gonna let them steam just a bit and I'm going to get uh, my pita ready. Okay, now doesn't that just look really yummy? I've got the grilled onions that I put. I added a few cherry tomatoes and here's our souvlaki meat. And underneath is tzatziki. Some of you might want to check out my video where I make tzatziki so you can see how to make the tzatziki. I'm going to try a bite here. It's hard being the cameraman and the cook all at the same time. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, so here we go. And I've got the bread rolled up and losing some of it here, but we'll... Oh, I know there's a little dog that probably is going to have a piece of that. So let's try and take a bite here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Mmm. -hmm. I wish you could taste that meat. The taste of the lemon and mm, the taste of the spices. Then the tzatziki alongside. It makes me feel a little bit like back in Greece, out there on the sidewalk. Back in those days, we paid for our everything with Greek money. Drachma, drachma, drax for short. I don't remember, but we could get two or three of these for just a few drax out there on the street. And they were so good. And this is 
good too. It may not be the exact replica, but it's as close as I've found. Better than any, any restaurant that I've been to as far as souvlakia. One more bite. Mmm. Mmm. Damn.